What is going on, Donut Unfriendly Nation? Matthew Spear from the Donut Unfriendly Show. You know, the other day I uh, made a little video, and in the beginning I just poked fun at Benny Johnson just a little bit, and I started out my video with, hey, guys, what's going on, man? It's Benny Johnson, your boy Benny. And, um, uh, you know, if you didn't like that one, which some of you didn't, you're going to hate this one. 15 seconds, we'll talk about the Taylor Swift psyop that Benny Johnson is espousing all over his network. Be right back. Do you want the truth? Are you tired of being so confused? You feel like you're more f***ed up than the lies on the evening news. We'll just step right in. We can talk about it all as friends. Still point, S-T-I-I-L-P-O-I-N-T, the Don't Unfriend Me Band. This is a picture of Benny Johnson. We'll talk about it at the end of the show, but it's going to change in just a few seconds. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I <laughs> I got to do it. Listen, I like Benny Johnson. I do. He's a smart guy. He's good looking guy. He's got a great family. He's God fearing. He loves Donald Trump. Well, when it suits him, he he he's just he's just ripe for being uh, hit. And, and I'm going to hit him. And the reason I'm going to hit him is it has nothing to do with who he is personally. It has to do with his actions and it has to do with the information that he provides not being accurate and not taking accountability for it. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But when we do, we have to show some accountability. And this establishes credibility. Uh, I'm going to talk about, obviously, the Taylor Swift PSYOP. And everyone's talking about it. Jesse Waters talked about it four years ago. Uh, he talked about it in 2019. He talked about it the other night on his show. And, of course, Benny's running with it because that's most of Benny's stuff is just regurgitated Fox News talking points. And he puts a clip up and he comments on it and then he throws it up on his show. And and let's face it, I do the same thing. And so do a bunch of other people. But you can't lie. And that is really imperative here. Let's go ahead and look at what he said and it's a long, long tweet. I'm going to break it down completely top to bottom because I, I I, think I owe it to you. And Benny owes his people too. My job is to provide the most accurate information to you. And I always challenge our politicians that their job is to represent the constituents and do what the constituents want. They don't do that. Well, I am going to be loyal to you and give you the absolute truth. Here it is. His starting of the post says, by now, everyone knows Taylor Swift is a government psyop. And this is exactly why corporate media is having a meltdown about it. Well, it's not just corporate media. There are some talking heads like myself and Tim Pool and others and Ben Shapiro who have said this is a bunch of crap. He also, Tim Pool pointed out, says there's a lot wrong here. And when he says a lot, I, he's not exaggerating. I've got it all for you. Here it is. The first one is in regards to the Pentagon and what they said about this. So here's the story. Here's the claim. He says, four years ago, the Pentagon's Psychological Operations Unit, oh boy, pitched NATO about turning Taylor Swift into a social influence asset. I actually remember this story, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the straight poop on what happened. The claim about the Pentagon's Psychological Operations Unit considering Taylor Swift as a spy or a psyop was sparked by Fox News host Jesse Waters. Waters suggested that the Pentagon had thought about using Swift to combat misinformation online. This assertion was based on a clip from a NATO conference in 2019 where Swift was mentioned as an example of a social media influencer. However, this idea was not accurate and has been dismissed by the Pentagon and anyone who's reputable, and that the, the mention of Swift in the conference was simply an example for a discussion on social media and her influence, not as a proposal for her to be an asset. The Pentagon humorously refuted these claims, and the partnership between Swift and Vote.org was clarified as an initiative and really just to focus on boosting voter turnout, not a psychological operation. Jesse Waters is now doubling down this blatant inaccuracy, as Fox News often does. Something to think about. Next, in 2019, George Soros bought her entire music catalog. Now, my daughter is a Swifty, and when I say she's a Swifty, I have to hear about it all the time, and I happen to know this story fairly well. 
The claim that in 2019, Taylor Swift's music catalog was at the center of a huge controversy would be an understatement. It involved acquisition from Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings through the purchase of Big Machine Label Group. Swift specifically mentioned that the Soros family was involved in the financial deal. Now, she mentioned it, and this is where the story holds some credibility and truth like most do. However, it was not George Soros personally who bought her music catalog, but rather the financing was associated with the purchase made by Braun. Swift's objections to the sale highlighted her lack of control over her early music recordings. And the truth of the matter is she's already released six renditions of her previous album, which they no longer have copyright to because they weren't made by them. She rewrote them. And my daughter has purchased all of them and I'm having to pay for it. So let's go ahead and chalk that one up as false. In 2020, she came out as a raging liberal voting for Joe Biden and being a Biden supporter after previously being politically neutral. Taylor Swift hasn't been politically neutral. There's videos that you can see when she was 16 years old, her sitting on a couch talking with her parents and her manager about her politics and wanting to come out and say something. This isn't the first time. It is true, though, that Taylor Swift publicly supported Joe Biden. Once again, a semblance of truth, specifically in the 2020 U.S. presidential election marking a significant shift from her previously neutral stance that was decided upon, and you've seen this in her documentaries, that she wasn't going to get involved in the political fray. Prior to the 2018 midterm election, Swift had been notably reticent about expressing her political opinions. This changed in 18 when she endorsed two Democratic candidates in Tennessee's midterm elections, and she spoke out against Senate Republican candidate Marsha Blackburn. Swift's endorsement of Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential race further underscored her active engagement in political matters. Like all celebrities, they have a right to support whomever they want. And the last thing I would do is continue to piss off this adult child. Next, in 2023, her era's tour ranked higher revenue than the GDP of 50 countries. Wow. I didn't know that. It grossed a lot of money. Is it 50 countries? Well, no, it's a few. But once again, a little bit of truth creeps its way in. It's called capitalism, Benny, and you should support it being a conservative Republican. The claim that Taylor Swift's heiress tour in 2023 generated higher revenue than the GDP of 50 countries is exaggerated, of course. While the tour did achieve record-breaking success, becoming the highest-grossing music tour ever, With a revenue of over $1 billion, this figure does not surpass the GDP of 50 countries. The tour's immense popularity and success are notable, but they do not reach the level of outperforming the GDPs of anything other than multiple countries. And when I say multiple, it is a handful. I have spoken out against her price gouging and fake demand by limiting supply, but that is market manipulation and not capitalism. However, this woman is who she is. And it's because of her and that we are the greatest country in the world that she has reached success, monumental success. And it sounds a little bit jealous to shoot her down for it. How about the next? In 2023, she helped register over 35,000 new voters with a single Instagram post. Yeah, following her post, which encouraged her 272 million followers to register to vote and included a link to vote.org. This is a nonpartisan nonprofit organization, and it recorded a surge in voter registration when she did it. More than 35,000 people registered to vote as a result of this, marking the most registrations on a national voter registration day since 2020 and showing a 23% increase from previous year. This instance highlights Swift's substantial impact on her fan base and her ability to mobilize them in civic participation. And why is that a bad thing? Mellencamp and Springsteen told us to rock the vote, and we did on MTV. We shouldn't be afraid of the other side. We should have better policy that makes it obvious to vote for us. And let's be honest, this is 0.00012% of her fan base, and it represents a minutia of the America voting base. People don't listen to celebrities. And although if we keep pissing her off, they may. So maybe we should stop. And now 
She's dating a Pfizer Bud Light agent in the NFL, the most watched live sport in America. And once again, truth. Kinda. Listen, I don't care what he endorses or who she dates. I simply choose to ignore it and not let it occupy my time. Do I agree with his endorsements? No. But I can only listen to Howie Long talk about his erection for so long on Fox and how Australian Dream will alleviate my arthritis also. I expect a plug from both of you, thank you. We should be happy that two white, straight people have found each other. More importantly, we should be ecstatic that the left has embraced a white couple and not demonized them as racist as of yet. We all know it's a matter of time and it's coming soon. Just ask J.K. Rowling. They destroy everyone who they prop up as a hero. Then even the New York Times wrote a story on how Biden is courting her for an endorsement. And now he wants to appear on stage with her, according to his post. Reports indicate that President Biden's re-election campaign is keen on securing Taylor Swift's endorsement. This is true. And it's to boost support among young voters. Swift, a significant influence, especially among these young audience, as we demonstrated earlier, has a history of these endorsements. While these reports suggest the campaign strategies, it's important to consider the general context of media reporting. The New York Times, like any news organization, has faced criticism and skepticism over the accuracy of its stories, underscoring the need for critical evaluation of news sources. So yes, it's true. And yes, every cycle, the Hollywood elite support Democrats. Shocker. Who knew? The last one that he put up, Mr. Benny Johnson, and here's a picture of Ben. If you don't know who he is, go over to his site and follow him and like him. He has some great stuff most of the time. He says, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to put it all together. You just have to be paying attention. Well, Mr. Johnson, I am paying attention, and I've been paying attention now for almost three years and calling people out when they use the term pay attention, and that's only a cover for their inequities. In the context of the argument, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to put it all together. You just have to be paying attention. I would like to add, however, when you purposely falsify context and lie— your argument does become devoid of any validity. It introduces a crucial consideration. This additional point emphasizes the importance of honesty and accuracy in information and dissemination. While being observant and analytical is key to understanding complex issues, the integrity of the analysis is compromised if it's based on false premise or manipulated facts. This underscores the critical need for factual accuracy, and contextual truth informing valid arguments and conclusions. In essence, while attention and critical thinking are vital, they must be grounded in truthful and accurate information to be credible. From plagiarizing articles, from hopping into bed with DeSantis, then Vivek, and then back to Trump, from your gotcha headlines that randomly pan out and never garner a retraction when they don't, from stealing the set of a low-level podcast... <coughs> Now we know the cause. And even now, making your own rap song to counter Ben Shapiro. It's not a level of talent. You are successful and people have borrowed ideas since the dawn of time. Taking other ideas and improving on them is a form of progress. Gates did it. Michelangelo did it. Patton and even Trump. But so did guys like Steve Jobs. And there is no doubt the world is better for having jobs around, but very few would sing his praises who knew him personally now that he's dead. Because he never did the same for them when he was alive. It's not that I am better or that Benny is a bad guy. It's that Benny contributes to the lack of credibility from both sides, and some of us are desperately trying to restore it without clout chasing our way out of relevance. Benny, thanks for allowing me to go ahead and pick on you a little bit. If you have some comments, you can go ahead and write to me. I'll come on your show. You can come on mine. We can have a conversation like adults. Like I said, it's not personal. You make our jobs harder. And I would just ask that you take a second and at least try to get it right more often than you do. Thanks for watching the Don't Unfriend Me show, folks. Please do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe, or leave your hate comments below because I always love those. Either way, I will see you tonight at 7 o'clock, and we would love for you to stop by. See you at 7 o'clock. Good night. Adjusting transmitter. This.
is the Don't Unfriendly Show with your hosts, Matt, Leroy, Amy, Olivia and Mike. Geopolitics, military analysis and election coverage. Coming to you live on the Spreely.tv network and all major social media channels at The Dumb Show. Honest, direct, unfiltered. Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We can agree, we can disagree, just don't unfriend me.